In this lesson, we'll be looking at machining fine details with a 3D pencil toolpath. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to use 3D pencil toolpath. Let's carry on with the file from the previous example, and let's take a look at a way to do some more finishing type passes with 3D toolpaths. With the adaptive clearing 3D toolpath, it's mainly used for us to remove a lot of material quickly with a consistent chip load on the bit. But at this point, we want to take a look at how we can get a finer surface on the finish of the propeller. So we're going to go to our 3D dropdown, and we're going to select the pencil toolpath. We want to change the tool type, and I'm going to go into my samples, and I want to go to the operation set to horizontal, and I'm going to filter the tool by only showing ball nose mills, and then I'm going to use a 5 millimeter ball and say OK. Under the geometry section, I don't want to select anything under geometry. I want to go to the avoid touch surfaces section. I want to select the top face of this single side of the propeller, and I want to use the touch surface option. Under the passes, I want to go in and I want to use 125 passes, and I'm going to go a distance of 0.5 per step. I'm going to leave all the linking and lead options the same, but I do also want to note that we have the option to do rest machining, which takes the previous operation, which is our adaptive, and it takes a look at how much material has already been removed. And this helps especially with pockets because you don't have to go back and completely remachine a pocket. You can only focus on the sides and the corners and maybe do a finishing pass on the bottom. So let's take a look at what those options will give us in terms of a toolpath. So as it's generating, you'll notice in this case, it does a single pass. We're going to come in and we're going to edit this and we're going to take a look at the options. We're going to turn off rest machining, make sure that we're touching the surface and we want to make sure that we're doing a certain number of step overs, the step over direction. And we're going to make sure that we say don't care for inside outside direction. Now, if we have it set outside to inside or inside to outside, it's really looking more at a pocket type of operation. When we have something like a blade where we want to go from left to right or front to back, we want to make sure that we don't tell Fusion that we're going inside of a pocket to the outside and really confuse the operation. So now what we have is a bunch of tool paths that can make a nice smooth transition. Let's take a look at setup and let's say new pattern. So what we want to do is a circular pattern and the axis that we want to use is the center of this part and we're going to pattern this operation once or a number of instances is twice equal spacing and we're going to keep the original we're going to say okay so now what we've done is we've created a pattern and if we expand this we have the original pencil and the pattern shows the second so now if we select setup 2 and we simulate this I'm going to jump ahead to the second operation. So we've this is the adaptive pass, and then we're going to play through. So as we take a look at this operation, I'll speed it up a bit. You can see how it's cleaning out the propeller. It starts in the middle and moves its way out. Now, ideally, we'd want to start from the outside and work our way in, but this gives us a fairly nice finish. Now, if we need it to be smoother than this, let's go ahead and let's change the material to a plastic vinyl, maybe that gives us a little bit better look. If we want to get a smoother finish, then we need to do either a different direction as a second cut, or we need to do smaller passes. Now in order to get smaller passes, we have to go back into the, the passes section, and instead of 125, maybe we'll do 250, and we'll say OK, and we'll let it calculate that. Now remember, we, we have it still set as 0.5 millimeter step over. So we will have to reduce that as well. 0.5 millimeter step over on 125 worked okay. So if we reduce that by half, we should be okay in terms of resolution on the blade. The more step overs you put into a file like this, the longer it's gonna to take to calculate. But once it's done, we should get a nice smooth transition on the final. Let's simulate it one more time. This time we can jump ahead and we can skip past those operations, allow it to play, and take a look at the final result.
So now you can see that the final result is a bit smoother. We're stepping over a little bit less. Now, obviously, we have some material left over on the side. We would need to go back and clean up. But for the most part, we did a pretty good job of cleaning this up. And I'm pretty happy with that result. Now, in reality, you do need to be careful with these tools because you don't want to get too close to the hub. If we show it as transparent, you can see that there's still material left on the outside of the hub. So while it does look like it's gouging it, it's actually taking it down to complete zero stock. But we would have to make sure that we avoid certain regions and we, and we don't cut into geometry like that. But so far, I'm happy with those operations in terms of 3D cutting on this part. So let's go ahead and save our file so we can move on.